give credit to. Hello, Unstoppable Real Estate Investors. We're live on my Facebook group, The Unstoppable Real Estate Investor. Uh, and this is the Top 5% podcast. And we definitely have a top 5%er with us. 95% of the people who attempt to be real estate investors fail. 95%. The only people I interview on my podcast are the people who have made it. They're doing six figures. They're supporting themselves with their business. And they no longer have to work their nine to five. Or if they're working a job, it's because they want to. They've made it. You know, so Rick Howell has a very warm spot in my heart because when I was working at Fortune Builders, I started at their internet marketing division, Mind Protein, And I was there the first year and a quarter of my time at Fortune Builders. And Rick signed up. He had signed up back in 2016, you said, Rick? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, 2016. Yeah, and then he got assigned to me as, as a, a marketing coach. I, I was his internet marketing coach. But I... We had such a good rapport, he would end up saying, God, you're you're really more like my business coach. And I eventually moved over to the business coaching team. But Rick was a ready aim fire. He he was an action taker. He was highly motivated. And it's pretty impressive what he's accomplished. And you're going to learn all about that. And you're going to learn about Rick's mindset and about how he has become so successful over these last eight years. He just went for it. He took massive action and it paid off. So welcome to my podcast, Rick. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate the opportunity. It's good to see you again. Yeah, you too. So Rick, you know, talk about, talk with me and tell people, what were you doing way before real estate? Because I know you have your license and you're an investor and you do it all. And we'll get to all that. We'll unpack all that. But what was Rick Howell doing way before real estate? Give us a little background about you. So before real estate, uh, I, I was an electrician. Um, I didn't learn about real estate until the uh, first thing I ever learned about real estate was in 2010. Um, here in Ohio or all over the country in 2010, as you know, things were tough. And uh, I was working at a, a power plant one time and there was another guy on the job that was rehabbing houses. So we talk about it in the trailer, job trailer every day. I was really curious about what he was doing. It was just like his little side thing. And uh, me at that time, I was a baseball coach, coach my son in baseball. Well, I had to leave work early a couple of times a week to go coach baseball games. And I remember the foreman always telling me every single time, well, if you can't stay the full 12 hours, there's a thousand guys on the layoff list that'll come take your job. This was every single time. So I knew I, at that time I felt controlled. I knew I wanted to find something else. I just don't know what it was yet. And I was always bending this guy's ear about flipping houses and how he got into it, but he didn't know how to teach me or coach me or anything like that. But what he did do changed the entire game for me. And that was, he gave me the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And most entrepreneurs are familiar with that, so won't get and into that. And a lot of real estate investors, that's where they cut their teeth. That, yeah. That's where, yeah, that that book just just lit a spark. Still didn't know anything about anything yet, So, but I had this book, and uh, we knew construction. So I knew that I was trying to find a house. So I took nuggets out of this book, which at that time was, um, we, we funded our first deal with home equity lines. And we just went on the MLS at that time. You could find anything on the MLS because the market was so bad. And uh, it was two electricians. We bought this house. We didn't know what in the heck we were doing. And we just started doing construction and renovating this thing, right? Um, that was our first deal. And we ended up uh, making some money, learned a lot of lessons on that deal because we had no, <laughs> we didn't know numbers. We didn't know literally anything. We literally took out what was in the house and we put in new. And that, that's how it went. But what we did learn on that job was we got an offer the first day. And if we would have walked away that day, we would have made about 35 G's on it. And that's that's uh, more than half of what we made as an electrician at that time. And uh, we said no, because we had a, our agent told us uh, the, 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 the offer was 10 grand lower than what list price was. And uh, the agent told us, don't come down that low on the first day. So we're like, yeah, great idea. We shouldn't take down 10 grand on the first day. 
Well, that house ended up sitting on the market for six months. We ended up selling it for 99 grand. We walked out and we profited. I think we profited about five to $7,000 each. And uh, so, yeah. We oh, boy, yeah. there's a yeah. valuable lesson learned. Yeah. Your first money is your best money. I'll never deviate from that ever again. That was the first deal, 2010, 11, somewhere in there. And that was the most valuable lesson that we've ever done, I think. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. And then you, when did you get your real estate license? Okay. So from we, we tried to figure this game out alone or without any help for uh, from 2010 there, to 2004. Well, let me interrupt you, Rick. The very yeah. first deal you did in real estate was that a rehab? Yeah, very first okay. deal. That's all, that's did, all we knew. Did you do that because of your trade background as an electrician? Like you felt comfortable with that kind of work? Because you could have wholesaled, you could have bought a rental. Why did you dive in? I didn't into know what wholesaling that? was. Okay. Because that's what the Rich Dad Poor Dad book said to do was uh, it talked about, we, we, knew, we knew a few things. We knew we didn't have much money. We had no idea. I mean, my mindset when about private lending was my. I remember looking. I remember looking at my buddy in the in this in this event, and I oh, said, "Who knows?" Your, your partner's name, I forget. Okay. Okay. Nope. Not, this was before Chuck. This was the before big Chuck. black guy that you were That's, with. Your one of your best friends. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Chuck. Chuck's still doing business. Uh, but this was this was even before that. This was this was Kevin and uh, this electrician friend of mine and one of my best buddies. And I remember looking and saying, who the hell is going to loan us money to flip houses, right? But what we did know, like the book said, we had we both had homes. So we learned what these home equity lines of credit were. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing we knew. So we that, so that's what we, that's what the book said. So we went and did it. Um, we got so you guys got right? HELOCs to fund that first deal? Yep. We funded our first deal with the HELOC. Both of, we, had, we had just enough between my house and his house to do one deal. That's how it all started. Uh, but as far as getting the license, I got, uh, I was very small minded back then. I was always trying to pinch pennies and I knew that this realtor that I was working with, I would find a house and she'd send me a lockbox code. I'd go in the house and we'd make a decision on whether we buy it or not. And over time I got to thinking to myself, man, I said, all she's doing is texting us a lockbox code. I said, I think I'm going to go get my license. Right. That's how the whole licensing thing started. Was okay. it? And that was in, that was in 2014. Yeah. Yeah. 2014 is when you yeah. got your license. Yeah, I got my license in 2014. Sold regular real estate for uh, a year and a half, and still trying to do it completely on my own. And how we ended up finding fortune builders was okay. So got, you got your real estate license before you found fortune builders. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. At that time, it was uh, yeah, we kind of did it backwards, but. Um, the reason that we still, still trying to do it all on our own, never knew who to reach out to for help or anything. And, uh, one time a contractor stole about 15 grand from us. And there, here's another lesson for everybody is back at that time, we what? were given there money. There was a dishonest contractor that stole <laughs> money from you. Well, no, yeah, but, I have a hard I, time believing that. I'm, I'm not sure what was worse at that time. What was, was, was he dishonest or was I dumb enough to give him money up front? Right. Probably both. They, they, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I was at a wedding complaining about all this. Looks like you and I are talking right now. I was complaining about the guy stealing money. And the guy was like, Hey man, have you ever thought about getting a coach? And I'm like, what's that? What do you mean? He was like, well, me and a friend of mine, we're part of this group called fortune builders down in Columbus, Ohio. And they were doing a lot of rehabs. And I'm like, what is that? So I literally, I went to them and, and, and clicked on all the links and wanted all the coaching and all that. And I figured, hell, if it's going to cost us some amount of money, we just lost more than that. So that, that's how all the coaching started, was trying to figure it out on our own long enough. So you joined Fortune Builders, and then you went to a yep. boot camp, and then you joined Mind Protein, and you just signed up for all the bells and whistles, and then you got assigned to me. Yeah. And yeah, you started to learn the internet marketing stuff. All, the, all of the internet market. When I met you, I remember... Literally, I'd be in a coffee shop. I remember it was once a month or twice a month. I can't remember. But I would go to this coffee shop and I'd be on the phone with you and you'd be talking me through things. And I'd literally be on the phone trying to figure out Facebook pages and groups and all this stuff that, you know, all the, I had no idea. But uh, it was always, uh, if there's any fault that I would tell people is take a breath and and put one foot in front, in front of the other 
and, you know, take one step every day because I did it the opposite. And you'd tell me to, Hey, by next month, have this done. And I'd literally sit in that coffee shop and try to accomplish it all before I left that day. Right. Yeah. I remember you were one of those where I said, look, Rick, I never say this to anybody, but slow the F down. Yeah. 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 Just going mock three with your hair on fire. Yeah. 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 They talk about, you know, and when we work with people now, it was, uh, there's people that you get yourself in a position and I did by investing in all that different coaching and all of the things and all that stuff. I put myself in a, in a financial position where I had no choice except to go and make, and make it work. So once you joined fortune builders, that's when you did your first fix and flip and the first offer is the best offer. You learned that lesson. And then after that first fix and flip, then what? We did the first fix and flip back in 2010. Oh, I you did, did it. it before Fortune Builders. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. When I was doing it the wrong way for so many years, we were only getting in. I'll bet you for those first four years or five, you know, or six years, we were the most deals we were ever able to do because we're working full time still was probably two or three deals a year. Right. Trying to do it. because We only had a certain amount of money. Right. How did signing up for Fortune Builders and Mind Protein and having coaches, how did that change things for you? The first thing I would say about that is putting me around other people that were along going along the same path, right? And staying like staying minded around. people. If you want to fly like an eagle, don't hang out with turkeys. Yeah. Yeah. Like minded people and having systems to, to and people to reach out to yourself being one of the most important ones is the um being able to uh, ask questions to people that were going to give you legitimate, honest help, right? And not somebody that was just uh, some internet guru that was going to try and pitch you on the next thing. And the, I would say with, with, with fortune builders, the big value was uh, understanding uh, mindset of money. Um, it, that's, that's when we learned how to uh, raise capital and put ourselves around other people where, you, you know, you go, you start off, you invested, you know, I think 50 grand is a lot of money and it is a very, a lot of money, but well, on top of that, then the mind protein, then all the NCH. And I mean, before yeah it's 70, 80 grand. And that's quite yeah. a, what I used to say to people is think of it as you just invested in college to yeah. learn a whole new profession. I used to also help students and I still do this with people. I coaches look, there needs to be education and implementation without education. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble without implementation. It's just a dream that's never going to come true. So you have to really balance. You learn a little and then do, learn a little and then do. And yeah. you were really good at that. Um, but the education lays out the map so that you know what you're doing. Right. Gives you the gives you the blueprint. And now, you know, it's been so long, I look back. And and the, the big reward was um, I ended up being a coach with Fortune Builders and then traveling and speaking with them for about three or four years. And I was able to see it from a different view of the, the brand new person getting started and what that looks like and what we look like getting started. Right. Because looking back, if you can give anybody, anybody listening to this podcast and you're just getting started, you might be a, a we, we like to work with middle investors. You, you just put one foot in front of the other and make sure you're learning from one person. Right. That was the key. Cause at first you're like, I'm going to get some info from Rihanna. Then I'm going to jump on YouTube. Then I'm going to go listen to this person. Then I'm going to go to this event. And you're just over consuming and it really slows you down. That would be one. Yeah, I like, I say, hey, look, learn one thing and then go implement it. Mm -hmm. Develop that skill, gain some certainty and confidence, then go learn something else and keep adding to it. Learn and implement, learn and implement, learn and implement. Yes, ma'am. Yep overwhelm if all you do is learn 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 and there's so many people in fortune builders who just spent all that money and never did anything with it which is such a shame because they just never pulled the trigger they just were eternal students that never took any action still yep. here it is years later and they've still never done a deal kind yep. of yep so what would you say you're so talk about what you've done in real estate since now you've you've got your toolbox you've got your team 
you're a real estate investor, previous electrician, you've learned through trial and error, then you got education and coaching. Yep. Um, so you did some fix and flips. What are all the aspects of real estate investing that you've done in the last several years? Got it. So we uh, we kind of did it backwards. We started we started with fix and flips uh, prior to coaching, and and it was miserable. And it was that what we did was we created and it totaled another job for ourselves, right? But after after the coaching, we learned how to systemize it, and it evolved. Um, we we kept we kept fixing and flipping, improving that. And what we have now is I call it the boring flip model. We are, our, our rehabs are the same and have been the same since 2017, 18. Every house is exactly the same color, same product, same finishings. Everything goes in it because we've built our, our rehab business like a, like a product going down the assembly line, like a franchise model. So we do probably, we try to focus on, I think last year we did 15 or 16 full renovations we also learned about it. We, we got into minimal wholesaling. See, I learned um, when we get too busy and we couldn't man any of the many more projects at once, I uh, started wholesaling them off to other investors around our area. And that was cool, but I'm more of a person that would rather do the work and uh, make the bigger money than I would um, off sale or wholesale it to somebody else and let them make all the money. So our business model is kind of like we uh, flip the, uh, or wait, keep keep the best and flip the rest. That's kind of what we go off of. So we have a, a rental portfolio of I don't know five six million dollars. Um, we have how many doors uh, do you guys have? I think are we're up you, to 20, 22 right now. Are you still working with Kevin or um? Yeah, Kevin. No, no, nope, no. Nope. Kevin, Kevin's no longer doing real estate. Are you uh, still that, with Charles? Charles is still doing deals periodically, not as, uh, not involved with my business personally, but he's still doing his own deals. Yeah. Um, we, we kind of, I Who's learned me now, who's your team now? We is my sister. She oversees all of, uh, pretty much everything. Uh, I'm the one that goes out and makes the mess and, and I'm in charge of acquisitions and getting money for deals. She handles all the property management, all the bookkeeping, all of the, uh, integrator roles, all the behind the scenes. Are you the like, visionary? Yes, ma'am. Hundred okay. percent. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yep. So we have all three aspects, and now recently we uh, we've taken the fact that I'm licensed. My son just recently got licensed. Awesome. And now yeah, yeah. So I'm, we're, now we're building out a sales arm of our business. So we do a lot of marketing, tons of marketing, and a lot of times uh, the person might want too much money for the house that we can't physically buy it, renovate it, or keep it. So we'll put it on the market for them and sell it for top dollar. And my son handles all that. Wow, you've got a great little family business going. Yeah, yeah, that was always the dream, you know. A lot of times, uh, people always talk scale and all this big, huge stuff and all that. That's not us. We do. Uh, you you can time. actually be quite successful in this business with a lean, mean team. It's, it's freedom. That's all we chase. We chase yeah. freedom. You know, we. Uh, so you're doing retail. You've got your like, kind of like what Fortune Builders did with Realty National. Yeah. And yeah. Um, CT Homes. Yeah, yeah. There, there, that, they had that's different a great, divisions. They had their retail. They had their wholesaling and fixing and flipping. They had yeah. their training company. All we did was took what we learned and just went and implemented it. Right. So it's it's nowhere near the the size of what they were. But I think my son, on average, he, he tries to get a listing a week. Right. But when you when 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 investors start growing and they uh you know they're marketing and marketing and marketing. The goal as a real estate investor should be to monetize every mon every monetizable lead, if that's a word. You should try to make money off every lead that you possibly can. So you don't always have to rehab them. You don't always have to wholesale them. You could you could refer them out or whatever. But if and if you're licensed, um, I don't know how it is in other states, but here's how it is in Ohio and Michigan. If you're licensed and you get a lead that comes through that you can't do anything with, you could still refer it out to another agent and take we we used to take fifty percent of the commission off of just uh, uh, referring them out. So you can create another six-figure income off leads you're not even doing anything with. Um, Yesenius, Yesenia Vasquez Rosa is on here right now. Live. Is she? Is she? she? She said she misses us both and she's glad to see us. I didn't even know she came on my podcast. And we've also gotten Annette Henry, Michelle Moyer, Liz Quinn. Who else is with us? 
Jerry uh, Goldby, um, Chad Lauer, Cameron Waite, and a bunch of others. So awesome, awesome. Uh, Hello, Erlen. yeah. A lot of those my, people my were in the same network. What's that? A lot of those people were in the same network. Yeah, Chad and Yesenia, those are awesome people. Yeah, yeah. And what my my VA Rose does is she'll go and post this in a bunch of other real estate investor groups after we're done. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So Rick, you know, I'm just so happy for you because you're such a great guy and you're such a go-getter and you want to bring other people along for the ride, like your family. Is there other aspects? Like, are you doing any coaching or training or do you have like your own posse, your own community that you're building? So, yeah, that's a great question. And thank you for the, for the kind words after, after, uh, when when the speaking and stuff went away with fortune builders and the pandemic in March of 2020 that was um, we all kept very tight and connected and a lot of people you know so we started calling each other out and somebody said well why don't you start your own coaching thing and I'm like well I never thought of that I don't know how to you know I wasn't a big you know I'm 46 years old I didn't know anything about building the community or, or social media all the social media stuff and all that so I ended up joining another mastermind and trying to learn how to build a coaching program. So what we have done is uh, we've been building a community of, of social media presence the past couple of years. And I've basically taken our business and broke it down into step-by-step -step processes and packaged it up. And we've created a course out of that. And then we have is group that coaching. Is the Level Up Real Estate Investor Coaching? Yep. Level Up REI Coaching. It's, a, uh, it's, a, it's targeted. It, it, it can be used for newbies. I don't really mind working with newbies, but what I'm really passionate about is working for more of middle investors like I was. And what I mean by middle investors, somebody that has attempted or is doing some deals, doing doing some deals, they're rehabbing or doing some wholesales or whatever, and they just want to take it to the next level. Um, not necessarily the people that are looking to have big, you know, 50 cold callers and all that kind of crazy stuff. I know there's a lot of people like me that would be happy with just, uh, you, you know, you, you can easily do a seven figure income uh, with a very small lean team. Our business operates with one virtual assistant, one project manager. My sister's the boss. There's me. And then my son handles all the uh, marketing and the sales side of things. So it's very small and uh, very powerful, you know, but we teach people how to run it like that. And then with those, with those, you know, those arms, you can also add fuel to that fire if you want to go bigger. But again, we, uh, we teach freedom and lifestyle over, um, Chasing Gross. the dollar all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. you happy with where you're at? Have you achieved your dream? Um, not necessarily yet. Where we're at now is I'm elevating, uh, I'm really focused on getting my son, his name's Keith and and Shelly to where they're um I mean they're, 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 they're financially. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the the we we automate and systemize everything we do. Like our, my goal is to have my sister be able to operate and see all this stuff off as minimal hours as possible. And, uh, uh, my son to be able to generate now he has tools to be able to create income. So if something were to happen to me tomorrow, he knows how to raise capital. He knows how to the fundamentals you're of rehabbing. The you're out there shaking bushes to see what's next, right? Every, every day. Now what, what you, I've learned, do you do with your coaching program? Is it just a recorded thing people buy or are you? doing any one-on-one -on -one coaching or speaking with your group? Tell us a little more about that. So the vision on that right now is we're still staying very active in putting out content and building out the YouTube channel, which that is, uh, uh, I would say, the biggest challenge for myself because I'm, my, my real estate's my number one, right? You get There's two different, types of, two different types of coaches out there. There's coaches that have maybe taken a few courses, maybe done a few deals, and they decide they don't like it, and they, they turn into a guru and teach everybody things they have no experience in. And then there's people that are full-fledged real estate investors that take people and teach them the experience that they learned from doing the business. That's what I focus on. We don't teach anybody anything that I'm not, I don't consider myself an expert in, right? So um, the goal right now is to continue to build the community. Uh, yes, it's a course. We do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Where I would like to see is I would like to literally fly into people's markets for a weekend, help them set up their marketing strategies, their, their basically share our entire business with them get them rolling and then guide them through the process. That's kind of the, the vision I'd like to do is not, not so many, the amount of students that's kind of an ego thing. That would be opinion. really high level and customized. 
Yeah, I think I think that would be uh, I like to travel. Right. And that's one thing I miss yeah. with uh, with the speaker world is traveling three times a month. I, I miss it. Um, but I know there are a lot of people that that are, are just kind of dragging a trailer through the mud, trying to get their real estate business going and maybe spending too much money in the wrong places that uh, I enjoy helping them. We call them middle investors. Yeah. Um, what would you say has been your biggest challenge in this business? The biggest challenge, the biggest mistake that I've made right now is at first I would buy into bullshit. Um, I've done, I did a deal one time. We lost a quarter million dollars and, oh, um, wow. yep. Yep. I partnered up with another, uh, uh, another quote unquote speaker coach. And, um, I tried to do a reverse or a reverse of my first virtual deal in another town. And I had no experience in that and come to find out, um, we got in bed with the wrong person. And it just didn't go well. And collectively as a whole, we uh, we lost about $250,000 over three years. So my biggest challenge at the beginning was jumping at shiny objects. That's what I would say. Um, I, I was, I, I, the, the thought process on that deal was, hey, I can go do this deal over here and we can all walk with 100 grand each or whatever the numbers were, I don't remember. But um, in Toledo, in our market, our, our criteria, we want to make sure we, uh, we net 35 K. So I'm like, man, I can do one deal there and triple that rather than do three here, which was the wrong move to make. So my thing to people is if stay in your lane, become an expert, like you teach people, become an expert in one thing before you move on to the next and don't jump at shiny objects and, and make sure I'm not, I'm not big on partnerships anymore. I learned that the hard way. Make sure that if you are going to get involved with other people in your business that you have vetted them and you have attorneys involved to protect both sides. You just do it the right way because in this world of real estate, people will dangle carrots in front of you, wanting you to do deals, wanting you to do other things a lot. And it's very important to know who you're doing business with. Absolutely. And even in the fortune builders community, there were people that were ripping people off and, you know, acting like, celebrities and you, yeah you really do have to um vet your people yeah um what has been the biggest lesson for you in real estate the biggest lesson for me in real estate is or the most valuable one gosh there's so many i i would say uh I would say the biggest lessons in real estate really don't have much to do with real estate. The biggest lessons I've learned throughout this journey is number one, you are the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. And if you're, if you're, if you're going down a path of trying to build a real estate business or any kind of path like that at all, and you have people around you that aren't supportive and uh, aren't at least not saying you need to tap on the rear end, cheering you on all the time, but you want people that are in your, in your corner and not going to be naysayers. The people, your environment means 95% of the success you're going to have, right? So if you're, if you're, if you're around a bunch of, and, and there's not to say that we're better than anybody or anything like that. That's not what I mean by this. But no, I've learned that. I like an eagle. You can't hang out with turkeys. You, yeah. The best thing you can possibly do is put yourself around people that are doing more than you and understand that collaboration over competition. When I learned that, because I come from a small town called Toledo, Ohio, where there's not many, I would say, players, big real estate people in the in the game. And everybody here is 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 chasing the same pen, right? Collaboration is very difficult. Everybody they look at it as like competition. Where in bigger markets that we go to, and people and friends of mine that we have, it's it's like you can pop off a a, a meetup and, and and teach a how to raise private money or something, you get 50 people in the room, and by the end of the night, there's people communicating, networking, passing resources back and forth. It's just phenomenal. So the best thing I could possibly say is put yourself around um, people with growth mindsets, people that are on the same path. If not, they have their own journey that'll cheer you on and just really be mindful of who's in your circle. Love that. Um, how is it running it as a family business talk a little <laughs> bit about that and the dynamics with your sister your son yeah that's, that like? that's a great question the biggest challenge in our family business is probably me um because i am uh it, i have to be very intentional not to bring home all the information and things that i learned from different events things like that 
and confuse everybody, right? At the end, um, my sister and I, it, she is, uh, we're totally, we're, we're, we're alike in a lot of ways, but we're very different in a lot of ways. She's very like, um, uh, how should I say this? Dot the very, I's, cross the T's, detail, yeah, organize. That, she's the integrator, you're the visionary. She's very perfect at every, at her role, she's very per perfect at it. And a lot of times I glaze over things. So it, it can be frustrating to her. So that, is very, the, that is a fault of us visionaries. We we know what we want, but we're not always good at communicating the details and following through enough to get the team on board. And yes. that's why it's so important that integrators and visionaries are on the same page and that the visionary is talking to the integrator enough about their expectations and their vision and that the integrator is confident enough to reel that visionary in yep. and make them work with them to automate everything and develop yeah. processes because the integrator's job is to make the visionary's vision happen. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. And the only the way that's thing. gonna happen is through processes, systems, a team, communication, accountability, tracking, and Visionaries suck at that. We're like on to the yes. next shiny object, shaking the bush. We're R and D. We're we're out there. What's the next hill to conquer? Yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing. It's very clear. And and it, when we first started, when we Shelly came on full time, was she's been doing my books for years and just been a part of the business for years. But I think it's almost two years now, full time. And she left a great job uh, at, a, at a, a hospital or a place called ProMedica, and to take a to take a chance and a gamble on uh, I shouldn't say a gamble, but she believed in what we were doing. And at the beginning, I was so scattered all over the place, I overwhelmed the hell out of her like immediately because I was trying to pump in fourteen years of knowledge into her just getting started. So, and there's been some there's been some hard 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 challenges. There's been some tough conversations. But she's great at what she does, and if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't be where we are. Um, and uh, that's the I'm I'm the biggest downfall. Her and my son are my son's college educated, great worker, systems guy, very deep or very structured. Um, he's great at what he does too. I'm the one that kind of confuses everybody, so I have to be intentional. Yeah, and is your the way sister good at reeling you in? Oh yeah, she she does not shy away from she. Oh yeah. She, uh, she's very, she uh, humble. She definitely can keep, yes. Yep. She'll keep me humble. And she'll also, she also cheers you on and, and lets you know, um, you know, she's excited about where we're going, but she also does not hesitate to tell me when I'm screwing up and that's, that's okay too. That's yep. kind of the yay boo of working with someone in your yeah. family. Yeah. 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 It's all right. I mean, we have our, we have our time. The, the big thing that I, there's a lot of it's me being intentional is being able to shut it off and not, if we're at a football game or we're at dinner or something, not always being on. I have to, I, I'm, it's a fault of myself. I'm always, I'm always on, right? Because we're always, you know. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're a machine and you're driven. Yeah, yeah I just, yeah. It's, it's fun. It, to me, to me, I see our lives and especially the past four years, man. It is just, I, I, there was a time when all this, uh, like when FB went away, I had just got a place in Florida, all sorts of stuff, and COVID hit. And for a while there, I didn't know if we were going to make it, right? And so there was no, there was no, nothing to do except for put your head down and go 100 miles an hour every day because we had no idea what the world was going to bring the next day, yeah. right? So now it's kind of like, you know, I've realized that we're, we're going to be okay, but there was such high anxiety and just nerves and just nobody knew what to expect. You know what's you know? so weird about that, Rick? that first year of COVID and everyone said, yeah, the, 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 the two years of COVID, I'm like, no, it was more like two and a half to three years of COVID. But yeah. when it was officially over um, was that everyone was worried and kind of hovering um, for a while and afraid to take action when COVID first hit. And it ended up being really good for real estate. You know, yeah, yeah. within six months to a year, like 2021, and then it kind of 
shifted again about a year and a half later, middle of 2022, things started to change again. The interest rates went up and all that. But yeah, you know, yeah. actually COVID was really good for a lot of things. I mean, bad yeah. things happen, but good things come out of it. Like, for example, I remember many years ago before everything got delivered, me thinking, and this was long before Amazon. I I used to think a long time ago, 20 or 30 years ago, God, it would sure would be nice if you could get your groceries delivered. <laughs> and now, even though COVID's going to be like the flu, it's always going to be with us and we've adapted to it. All the things that can, you can have anything, literally anything yeah. delivered to you now. That's a yeah. wonderful thing, you know? Yeah. The thing that came out of it, you know? Yeah. There, there's so <clears throat> many things, you know, especially in the real estate world, there's a lot of people that didn't make it and, and haven't having problems. And thankfully this would be a nugget for everybody is um, don't overextend yourself ever. Cause you don't know what the world's going to bring. And also the main takeaway that people need to realize from this whole COVID thing is you never buy on appreciation, especially if we're having houses, never buy a house based on what you think it's going to be worth in six months or a year ever. I know so many people. You go by the ARV right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. It doesn't matter. It, it, right now, I saw so many people, especially in the higher end markets, that were buying on a house today because in six months it was going to be twenty percent higher or whatever. And a lot of people well, got Amy hurt really Majority, bad. In her story, you know, Amy, in her yeah. story, you just got that story, and this was before COVID happened. She like her niche was condos in Chicago. Yeah. And then she she even says this, but this is what I love about her. She's so transparent and yeah. real about her story is she um, then got greedy. She says yeah. this yeah, and um, wanted to know how to do high-end luxury homes. So she yeah. got in there and she was just like, well, you know, I could do this. And she... She started to ignore some of the fundamentals that doesn't matter what market you're in. Yeah. Um, building in the contingencies. Yeah. And because they were such big homes and it was so much money, she didn't realize that one change order could be a hundred thousand dollars in the budget. Yeah. And yep. she also sat they also saturated the market. So they bought all these big luxury homes in the same market. And couldn't sell them all because they had flooded the market. So, and and she still, even to this day, is still repaying some of those private money lenders. She went bankrupt. You know, JD had to coach her through it. I mean, her story is very inspiring in that she survived that and she did the right thing. All of us are going to have some kind of failure. Yes. So we need to talk about that. Talk about a big failure you had. And how you recovered from it, losing the 250, and just how people need to navigate failure rather than being afraid of it and having them it stop them yeah. from taking action. But how do they navigate that? And what what are the benefits of being willing to go through failure? So share your that's, big failure and how you negotiated it. That that's a great question. And that's you're so right. So the the biggest, the biggest failure or i would say would be losing the 250 and and how we negotiated that was that was the time i was ready to quit i was i was psychologically a mess it was yeah that was, would mess up anybody it was i was i was embarrassed um because this person i thought was you know I actually i the thing is you can never when you go through failures here's the best thing you can do when you go through failures or something's going to happen the best thing you could possibly do is not play the the blame game Always bring it back to yourself and find out what you, you could have did. Responsibility, yeah. What you could have did on the front end on, on how you got there, right? How did you get here to begin with? And how do you not get there again? So in our situation, it was I was greedy, just like you were speaking on with Amy. I got greedy. I jumped at a bigger, I jumped at a bigger number, less work. So I was not only greedy, I was lazy and greedy, right? Jumping into a niche that I had no idea how to do, which was a remote rehab. And lazy, greedy, and no, not not an expert. 
But how we navigated it through was my sister was a major part of this because I was depressed. I was, it was, it was bad. And the, the, a lot of the friends and other investors within FB and the, and the full immersion team, um, where I was able to talk high level with them because everybody's been through that, but surrounding yourself with people that will let you know, it's going to be okay and keep inspiring to tell you, um, to push through when I had to write, I think we had, we had to write a check out of our own business for $46,000, I think at the end, um, at the end of that deal. Yeah. And the way, the way that my sister helped me get through that was, uh, she shared a story that my dad had a, a loss back when in, in his business. And the best thing you could possibly do is put yourself around other business people that have suffered the same type or gone through something themselves and just have conversations because if you're getting into real estate investing or any other sort of business at all, and you don't think you're going to ha have speed bumps, you're getting in the wrong business because you're going to have speed bumps. But the key is being able to be forthcoming, talk about them and put yourself around other people that can help you work through them. Like this for this podcast, for example, don't be greedy, right? And don't, don't be greedy and don't, and don't invest with an ego. Yeah. You just, it's like any other profession. There are specific skills you need to learn. And then you trust those skills. Like when I'm teaching new people how to set up a wholesaling system. Yeah. And we're using an analyzer tool, like a yep. fast and a, a fast, you know, not the one that fortune builders created, which is good to go walk through and do a deeper analysis. But when you're wholesaling, you've got to analyze deals faster. So right. it's an analyzer tool that's been refined. And they're looking at the numbers and numbers don't lie. And some people look at the numbers and go, well, you know, they're 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 in disbelief like right is is this a deal or does it make sense i'm like well let's look at it and we're looking at different columns in the analyzer you're looking at mayo you're looking at a mayo formula divided by list price you're looking at repairs you're looking at cost per square foot of the repairs you're looking at the arv you're and you're you know and the analyzer is going to spit out some options but then there's different markets and stuff where you have to know where you can tweak, where there's give on the numbers. Um, right. And also what whether or not something's over your head. It's like, if you're brand new and you're wholesaling, I tell them stay in the average to medium range rehab area. Don't yes. try and wholesale these gut rehab jobs if you don't, if you've never walked through a property with the deal with a more in extensive deal analyzer repair estimator like fortune builders and i'll do that i'll say look i want you walking through two or three properties a week going right. through with a repair estimator because you aren't going to know what you're doing as a wholesaler if you if you don't do that you, you have to know your number you have to know you your have numbers to know your numbers and yeah. you've got to yeah. believe the numbers right and not force them. People, I see a lot of right. people like, well, if I, what if I just tweak this or change this? And you're like, and then they end up, they end up cutting it, cutting it too thin, you know, just uh, the pe people investing in coaching, like people that have worked with, like you had a major part in, in my education, right. And having someone like you that will have the, the heart to tell someone when they're out of line, right. Like, like that's one thing about you is you used to tell me all the time, you know, we could, <laughs> basically slow down don't be it's you have to yeah, be open, when you go too so fast it's like it's rare to tell someone to slow down but in your case you were just making too many mistakes because you were all over the place yeah yeah that, that that's a very that was a big 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 fault and that slowed us down a lot because that's why now our business when we talked about how thin it is it's very small. It's in a bubble and we don't deviate from the types of rehab. We don't do anything over. We, we're putting our most expensive rehab we've ever done on the market. It goes live Saturday and it's $300,000. Everything we do is under 300,000. We stay in the first time home buyer price point, just like all my coaches taught me, you know, that way if the, if the market shifts, you know, there's still people that want to buy houses, no matter what happens to the market, you stay in the first time home buyer price point. That's where all the buyers are. And we never deviated from that from day one. And you've built a $5 million portfolio, 22 units. You employ your sister and your brother and a VA. Son, and your, son. 
your I mean son, sorry. Yeah, I'm, yeah. And son. And you're now helping them um work them themselves out of a job. And um so I'm just curious if you were to jump up on a rooftop, anything you want to yeah. say or um bring up that I haven't asked yet before we shift in towards closing. Anything that we had believe in yourself and stay off the internet. And when I, when I say that is um, some things that I see people slow, that, that slows people down more is comparing themselves to other people. Um, I see people that get involved with real estate and right away, and I'm very guilty of this too. They get online and they see some guy talking about, you know, sending a picture of his check leaning by a Lamborghini and he did 50 deals this month. That could be very well true, but I'll be the first to tell you that 99% of what you see is complete BS. And we get caught up in um, self-sabotage by comparing ourselves to what we are doing or not doing compared to what we think somebody else is doing. The best thing you can do yeah, is- judge, our, Don't judge your insights based on someone else's outsides because you really don't know what's going on over there. And you might no. think the grass is greener on the other side, but it isn't. No, Everyone's there's a couple got things. their own challenges. There, there's a couple of things that I, I'd like to put out there and, and that, that I think are very important. Number one is document your journey. If I could go back and start over all the way to 2010, when I say document your journey, shoot videos of you re rehabbing houses. Don't post checks or anything like that, but shoot videos, tell the story of what you're doing. If you're rehabbing a house, if you're helping a seller get out of a certain situation, if you're working with a realtor, document your journey over time and, and throw it on your social media because it creates credibility and that over time that stacks and will help you with private money lenders that will help you with just building your team contractors just document your journey and put it out there for the world to see as uh, uh, uh it, it, it's marketing but what it does is it creates credibility and really helps you if i could go back and start over i would have did that long ago um that would be the first thing and the second thing is understand that when you're getting involved in real estate, if you're just starting off or you're just getting started, that this is hard work. It's 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 extremely yeah. hard work. Yeah, people it's get hard. sold it's, the it's, dream by companies like Fortune Builders that that share that in a three day, mm -hmm. but you know, it's still hard work. It, it's, it's hard work. Not, not a get rich quick. Mm -hmm. It's you need determination, perseverance, and resilience. You need yep. to have to be willing to pay your dues put yep. in the reps it is a long-term wealth building strategy and yep. people just don't want to work they don't want to do the work if you're willing to give up i'd say minimum 12 but max not max but 12 to 24 months of, of keeping your head down going through learning the process of whatever whatever niche of real estate is you you will come out the other side winning if you pay attention to whoever's teaching you, I mean, everybody, the, the, the thing is the real estate, the, um, the information doesn't change. Like how you wholesale a house doesn't change. How you rehab, how, none of that changes. What changes is who you hear it from and do you align with that person, right? So focus on working with one individual, whatever niche you're learning, understand it's going to be hard ass work. Go through the process, and I promise you, when you come out the other side, you'll be thankful you did because then it evolves from wholesaling to rehabbing to buy and holds to coaching to whatever. But you have to perfect one thing first: be willing to put in the work, get your hands dirty, and the reward will be that much better, more beneficial for you. Love that, love that. So, if you were to jump up on a rooftop and you had a captive audience and they yeah. were hanging on your every word, and yeah. we're going to implement your advice what would your advice be if they were going to implement my advice what would my advice be invest in yourself first and what i mean by that is if you're in a position where you think you can learn how to do something like this on your own uh trust me you can't whether it be um, another investor whether it be a coach whether it be um any anywhere the, the, the fastest way to bridge the gap or to get from A to Z quick more quickly than what it normally takes is to learn from somebody that's been an expert in the niche you're looking for. Um, that's what I would tell people. Uh, if I could go back from 2016 to 2010, I would have 
uh, hired somebody to teach me how to do this way before trying to figure it out myself. Um, that, that's what I would do. People are always looking for the golden nugget. They, they tap your shoulder. How did you get here? How did you, well, what's the, what's the secret to real estate? The secret to real estate is learning from somebody that's perfected what you want to perfect. And I think anybody who's following you, uh, you've created and had an impact with so many people, me included. I'm great forever grateful for that, that people are in the right and place. And now so have you podcast. paying it forward. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Yeah. That's it. There's, there's nothing better than, hey, if we can share nuggets, we'll do that and help people move the needle. So I want to ask anybody who's here on the Zoom with us, Meg, Gail, and Vicki, Terry, do any of you have any questions for me or Rick? You'll need to unmute Terry, Gail, Megan. Do any of you want to ask me or Rick a question? Uh, no, uh, I don't have any questions, uh, but I have been listening as best as I could while I'm installing cameras outside of my house. So. <laughs> well, it's good to have you here, Megan. Thanks. Terry or Gail or Vicki, um, do either of you have any questions or comments? Terry? I, I'm good. I jumped in here in the middle, so but I'm I think I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Hey Rick, let's not yes, wait seven or eight years to connect again. Um, let's stay let's in touch. Do it. Uh, I, I, thank I you appreciate so much. It. Yeah, thanks for your time and sharing your story. You're just um humble for how successful you are and what a great guy you are, and you pay it forward and I just, it's a, it's a joy to reconnect with you. Thank you so much. I thank you for everything and the impact that you've had on all this. All right, everybody. Remember, take action, no excuses, go get results. Bye now.